Hi and welcome back. So it feels like only recently I started my NMN experiment. It's actually been 39 months. I'm going to go through the 39 month review. I'm going to cover May, June and July of 2022 and my subjective and my objective statistics. Enough waffling of me. Let's get into it. So first of all, let's cover the objective stats. These are the ones that I get from my um, biometric scales. I'm going to tell you what I got this time what I got last time, and then the difference from the start also. So let's get into it. Weight this time was 87.08 kilos, and that's 192 pounds. That's down, so I've lost weight, 1.1 kilo since the last check, which is 4 pounds, and down 4.9 kilos, which is over 10 pounds since the start. And this is a number I do want to get down because generally, general population, as we tend to get older, we all tend to put on weight. People don't normally get older and lose weight. So this is moving in the right direction. BMI, which you know, if you've watched the channel, I'm not a big fan of because BMI does not differentiate between fat and muscle. So an extremely or a moderately muscled person will have a high score because it just measures the, the weight and doesn't say and doesn't differentiate between fat and muscle. So my um, BMI score this time is 28.3. That's down 0 0.6 since the last check and down 1.7 since the start. So if you are a fan of BMI, that's moving in the right direction. I'm not. I probably couldn't care less. Percentage body fat this time, 24%, which not good. But that said, it's down 1.2 since the last check and it's down 2.5 uh, since using this new set of scales. So uh, that's moving in the right direction. Then we're into muscle mass. So my muscle mass muscle mass percentage, 34.5 this time. That's up. So I've gained muscle, 0 0.6 since the last check. Uh, and it's up one since starting to use this new set of scales. So again, that's moving in the right direction. Uh, muscle mass is something you need to keep to fight off the effects of diseases such as sarcopenia. Basal metabolic rate was... Um, oh, 1788 this time it was 1811 so that's down 23 and that's to be expected because this does move up and down your your need for burning calories does move up and down as and when you lose or uh, gain weight and i've lost weight so the the number required is going to drop my waistline this time was 35 it was 35.5 the last time, so down half an inch since the last check and down four inches since the start. And much like weight, this is one of those measurements that as we get older, generally tends to increase. You don't see people getting older and getting um, lighter and also the size of their waist reducing. So again, this is moving in the right direction as far as I'm concerned. Visceral fat, which is a number I do want to bring down, is now 13. That's down one from 14 the last time and it's down two since i started this new set of scales now when i used to go to gold's gym it was constantly at 12 and then when i started using the scales at home it jumped to 15 so that's not a big jump it should really uh, have been 12 again so if this is 13 if i went back to gold's gym and got measured and it had dropped from 15 to 13 um this 12 may well be 9 or 10 which is good uh, I seem to remember someone mentioning in the comments that a good number for visceral fat is 12 or 13. So I'm trying to get back down to 12. But if I went to Gold's Gym, I think I'd be well under 12. So um, better to use this higher number and to try and get the higher number down. So sleep, you can see here that my average sleep is 6 hours 42, 39 and 6 hours 43. Uh, that's down quite a lot from the 7 hours 51 here <clears throat> and the more constant 7 hours there. Now, I'm living alone at the moment um, and this quarter has been all of me living on my own and I tend to do, I, I know I do sleep better when I'm sleeping with my wife. So uh, I think that's the reason this number has changed. Also, um, the, the the new apartment I live in <clears throat> is quite noisy. Uh, it's very close to the mosque, so the call to prayer does wake me up earlier than I would normally wake up, so that's affected this. My average light sleep, 4 hours, 25, 21 and 21, which is not too bad. The deep sleep, which I'm quite still quite happy with, is over an hour and 15 every night, which I think is a good number. My REM sleep, which is also uh, an important part of sleep, 53 minutes, 55 and one hour. So for the quarter, my overall average sleep is six hours and 41 a night. 
My light sleep is around um, four hours 21 a night. Average deep sleep is an average of one hour 22, which I'm very happy with. And the REM sleep is an average of around 56 minutes. Again, I'd like to get deep and REM sleep up, um, but that's quite difficult. I'm sure it would shoot up my sleep if I was with my wife. Now, um, rest and heart rate. For the quarter, my rest and heart rate has been 59, 58.50 and 58.50. And I measure this on the 1st, 10th, 20th and 30th of the month. And then I add them up, divide by four to give me the average for that month. Uh, so the average for the quarter for rested heart rate is 58.66. And if you look at this chart, 58.66 still has me for my age group um, in the excellent range. 57 is the lower end of that um, and 61 is up. So if I can get it down below 57, um, I'll be into athlete territory, which would be nice, but not really important. I think excellent for someone who's 58 is is a good number. So that's it for my objective stats. Uh, let's move on now to my sorry subjective. Let's now move on to my objective stats. So let's move on to my 30, 39 month update. These are my subjective stats. So this is my um, my my thoughts on how I'm feeling, my my anecdotal evidence, etc. Let's move on first of all to my supplement regime. What I was taking during the last three months. So nicotinamide mononucleotide, I'm still on 1.5 grams a day, 1.5 grams of trans resveratrol. Remember, I'm only taking that now uh, on the days that I don't train. So I take that on a Tuesday, Thursday and a Saturday. Berberine, 1.5 grams of berberine. Trimethylglycine, 2 grams, sorry, 1.5 grams of TMG every day to um to supplement my nicotinamide mononucleotide. Vitamin D3, 5,000 international units of vitamin D3, and I take 10,000 on Monday and Wednesday, so I keep my, my, my D3 level up. Vitamin K2, 120 micrograms of vitamin K2, and that's the MK7 version. Magnesium, 250 milligrams of magnesium, and that's the L3 and 8 version. High molecular weight hyaluronic acid, and that is the one you want to get. And I'm taking 200 milligrams of that per day. I take two grams of fisetin a day, and that's only in the first, second, and third of each month. Uh, and I take two grams of quercetin every day. Sorry, two grams of quercetin. Again, that's only in the first, second, and third of each month. Now, I've added to the stack since the last time CERT6 activator, and I take 800 grams of the CERT6 activator every day. So let's move on to my diet and fasting regime. First of all, fasting, uh, intermittent fasting, weekdays, 8 p.m. to noon. That's the 16 8, 16 8 protocol. And I stick to that very, very rigidly indeed. On the weekends, it's 9 p.m., sorry, 8 p.m. to about 9 a.m. in the morning. Sometimes that'll be a bit earlier. If I go out for a bike ride and I stop at a coffee shop, then I may break that as well. And that's not a bad thing. But for five days of the week, I'm definitely fasting 16 8. My diet, um, this pretty much hasn't changed since I started uh, three years ago. My lunch, which is when I break my fast at midday, is yogurt and parsley. Sometimes I'll have a few nuts. Um, they've started supplying lunch at work, so I sometimes also have one or two boiled eggs, but that's not every day. The, the main thing is the yogurt and the parsley. Um, if I do have an afternoon snack, it may be the boiled eggs. It may be a smoothie, which is nuts. Um, which is berries, sorry, and I may have a handful of nuts and that's a snack in the afternoon. I'm really trying to cut that out and go to two meals a day, which is the breakfast and then my meal, me, main meal at night. My dinner, again, hasn't changed that much. Meat or fish and vegetables. It may have changed slightly in that, whereas before I would be eating an equal amount of steak or steamed salmon, I'm tending now to eat more steamed fish than steak. As the weather um, starts to get cooler, I will start to introduce more meat into the diet. And I'm going to get a thrashing off the vegans, but I don't care. Uh, pizza of the weekend used to be pizza night on Thursday night. That's now out of the window because the kids aren't here and I'm happy not to go with a pizza. Uh, if I go out, I don't think I eat um, any junk food. I'll eat in a restaurant. I'll try to have steak. I'll try to have a burger. I don't eat the bun. Uh, and that's it. On the weekend... 
maybe a glass or two of wine or maybe a beer. I'm trying to cut down on the beer and just stick into wine. Uh, I may also have a vodka or a diet, a vodka and a diet coke. But that really is one maximum of two per night. So that's it for my diet of fasting. So my overall feeling, my energy levels, um, and this is the, the metric that I use, is and has always been for quite a long time, maybe two years now, it's high and steady. Um, it may improve slightly. I may be maybe more motivated uh, during one week if I'm going to the gym, but generally it's high and steady, um, not high in his spurts, uh, and it's not showing any change. It's, it's, it's pretty much there most of the time. No lethargy, plenty of get up and go. Um, more about this when I come on to uh, my motivation. Let's look at a bit more about my overall feeling. Napping in the afternoon, as before, that's completely gone. I did tend to do that when it was uh, Ramadan because I was taking my NMN first thing in the morning. Now I'm taking it back in the afternoon. No requirement to nap. Motivation um, has remained high and steady, sticking to the plans I made, etc. <clears throat> that said, moving back to the Middle East without the family has affected me with regard to focus. I found myself daydreaming, not putting stuff off, but um, this has affected my motivation occasionally, but but not really that much. Um, gym performance. So I've started CrossFit. I do that now twice a week. Um, my And I do my normal weight training at the weekend. As the weather cools, I'll try to also introduce into that cycling, um, but only when the weather gets cooler. For those who, who are familiar with CrossFit, you'll know that there's a, a metabolic condition element, which is called the WOD or the workout of the day. Um, this has definitely upped my cardio time per week far more than my usual training. So I used to do weights, heavy weights, um, compound exercises, and then I would do some kind of hit uh, at the end. So similar to a CrossFit, but obviously I would only go as fast as I wanted to go. And if I thought I'd done what I wanted to do, I could I could stop. You can't do that in CrossFit. They won't let you do it. So the workout today I did today was 16 minutes um, AMRAP, as many rounds as possible. Um, and when I check my fitness tracker, my aerobic, anaerobic numbers are well up. And also, I'm sometimes getting into VO2 max, one, two or three minutes, depending on the type of workout, whereas I would never get into VO2 max when I hit the gym on my own. Uh, injuries, zero, nothing at all whatsoever to do with injury. So that's that's a welcome um that's a welcome um, thing. <laughs> and then sickness, not sick at all. The last time I was sick was December last year when I got the Omicron version of um, <clears throat> COVID. And that's that's gone. So for the last three months, no sickness whatsoever. Uh, I think the key point that I want to mention here is as the months roll on and the data keeps rolling in, it's going to become more and more comprehensive and it's going to paint a clearer picture of which way my health, my body, etc. is actually moving. I'm quite happy with the direction it's moving in. Two areas specifically that I mentioned during the video, and that's my waistline and my weight. As I also mentioned, generally as people get into their 40s, 50s and 60s, they suffer from metabolic syndrome and other similar diseases and tend to start putting weight on and find it difficult to shift. Not many people as they go through their 40s and 50s head towards their 60s as I am, manage to reduce their weight and also reduce their waist size. Um, that's it for today. Let me know what you think about the video. Let me know if there's perhaps some elements that I glossed over you think I should have covered in more detail or there's something I didn't mention at all that you've seen that you think is key and I should probably look at the next time I do it, which is in another three months. Well, that's it for today. I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope you enjoyed the update. Let me know what you think in the comments below. I look forward to seeing you in the next video. As always, please take care, stay safe, and I'll see you soon. Bye for now.